Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to the live. Guess what? We're making this morning, guys. We're making something Jamaican, but a little bit, you know, different with a twist. Um, I've made this dish before, I think, on the live, but I made it in a different way. But I'm going to be putting a twist on this dish this morning. Good morning, Monica. Good morning to my Facebook viewers, my YouTube viewers, and also my Instagram viewers. Yes, I'm live on Instagram this morning. I was trying to get my TikTok up, but for some reason it was giving me some um, login problems. So I just left it alone. So hopefully next week we will be on TikTok Live. So good morning, everyone, and welcome to the live. Welcome to Celie's Kitchen Live. Let me just turn my camera a little bit on Facebook so you could all see what I'm doing this morning. So guys, this morning, I already had my tea. I had to drop twine to work, so I end up having a little tea before I go. So I'm not making any tea on live this morning. Good morning, Judy. Good morning to my big friend who they are far in, who are running from Sealy's Kitchen this morning, who don't want to come and make my um, selfish fritters. But anyway, I'm going to get you. Don't worry. You know me. Anyway, guys, so this morning, I'm going to be making some saltfish rundown. Yes, some saltfish rundown Jamaican style coconut milk. Scotch bonnet pepper, the whole nine yards. I have all my condiments over here, all lined out. My big piece of boiled saltfish. And yes, man, I'm here, things are going on in here. So, and all my seasoning and stuff over here. Let me just put this over here. And I'm also going to be making some authentic, some authentic fufu straight out of Africa. Yes, man. I'm not making the cassava fufu, but I will be making some green plantain fufu. Yes, and I'm going to do it the African style and eat it with my hands and showing all of them do it. Yes, because I have a very, well, had a very good African friend. I learned a lot from him making all these African dishes. I know how to make jello fries. I know how to make the fufus and the peanut butter soups and all that craziness. Yes, I know how to cook African food, guys. All right. So let's get the baller rolling. All right, guys. So I didn't, I purposely didn't debone my saltfish because, you know, you guys are complaining that I always have everything prepped. You want to see how I do it from scratch. So I decided to leave the saltfish until, you know, the show. So I could just debone it on the show and at least show you how I do it. And let me just get a dish right here. So I could put the D-bone saltfish in this dish right here. Alrighty, so in the meantime, I'm going to put a little fire on my saucepan right here. So it can warm up. And of course, I'm going to be using a little bit of grapeseed oil, a little plant-based butter, all these seasonings and stuff. And let's see how this saltfish rundown comes out. Good morning, Jackie. Yes, big up to my friend Jackie and Colleen and Julianne and all those persons that have joined my live this morning. All right, guys. So let me wash my hands because I have to debone the saltfish and I'm not using gloves. No, I'm not using gloves today. So I'm just going to wash my hands. Oh, paper towel is finished. I need to go run and get one, guys. Guys, bear with me. Let me just grab a quick paper towel. I use a paper towel a day now, guys. I go through paper bounties so fast. It's not funny. Bounty need to sponsor Sealy's Kitchen. <laughs> Yes, man, bounty need to sponsor Sealy's Kitchen. All right, guys. So I'm just going to debone my saltfish with my hands, no gloves. Because, you know, when we back home, we don't use no gloves to debone no saltfish. You know, we just use the hands and debone it. And I'm not even going to do it the stush way and use a fork like, you know, 
Yeah, so I'm using authentic cod fish, guys. Authentic cod. And um, it's very soft, succulent. I boiled it twice just to get the excess salt out of it. So as you can see, it's just falling off the bone because it's well cooked. And, um, you know, I'm just putting it into medium pieces. I'm not making it all so small, just medium pieces because we want to bite into the saltfish when we make the, the rundown. And I plan on putting a little twist to it at the end. I'm going to be adding some pineapple pieces. Some real, real authentic pineapple. No can, nothing, real pineapple from the fruit itself. I didn't even peel it yet, and I purposely didn't peel it because you guys are complaining that you need to see how I prep some of my stuff. So, you know, I left it for that reason. All right, so my saltfish is deboned. I'm just going to wash my hands one more time just to, you know, make sure my hands are clean. Make sure my hands are clean. All right, so you see how quickly. And good morning, Drew. Good morning, Kima. Good morning, Carmen. All right, guys. So as you can see over here, I deboned uh, my saltfish, and this is about a pound of saltfish that I'm using right here. Um, I have um, some cut scallion over here, some chopped up. Well, I didn't chop it up yet, but I might just grate it. Um, some garlic a piece of onion, a baby bell, three grape tomatoes. I don't want to use too much. And a half of a green sweet pepper. And of course, you can't make rundown without thyme. And I have my coconut milk here. All right, guys. So I have to cook the coconut milk and the spices first so I can get that coconut milk to the custard stage. And then I will add my saltfish after everything is cooked down in the coconut. Now, so we cook it, right? Yes. All right. So I'm going to start out by adding some grapeseed oil. And this is a new bottle that I'm using this morning. So I'm just adding a little bit because, you know, the coconut has its own oils and stuff. So you don't want it. You don't want a greasy run out. All right, so let me just turn my fan on to get the excess smoke out of here. And I'm going to start out with my coconut milk. So guys, as you can see, my coconut milk is in the pot. Um, back home when we're making stew peas, we don't cut up the scallion, you know, we just do it like this. So I'm doing it the Jamaican style. I'm just kind of breaking it up like softening it up and I'm just going to drop it in the pot whole because that's how I see Miss D do it. So I'm using four stalks of scallion. Good morning, Ava. Good morning, Shelly. And welcome to my live this morning. And of course, guys, I'm adding some thyme, some dried thyme. So I'm just spreading this evenly in my coconut milk. The next thing I'm going to add is a scotch bonnet pepper, but I'm not bursting the pepper, guys. I just want the pot to have the flavor of the scotch bonnet pepper. So I'm just dropping that in right there. So right now I'm going to be just dicing some bell peppers in. Because, guys, if you don't cook the coconut milk properly, you know, it will hurt your belly. So I'm seasoning up my coconut milk before I actually drop my saltfish in. I'm going to be adding additional seasoning over here, but not yet. I just want the herbs to cook out in the coconut milk properly. So we can have that nice, rich, authentic, organic taste. I know I'm adding some uh, red baby bell. So I'm just going to cut these across. Oops. Cutting these in pieces across. I'm not adding too many tomatoes because I'm looking for a particular taste. So I'm just adding three great tomatoes. And 
and of course, a half of an onion. So I'm just dicing this up in a pot. So guys, today we're going to talk a little bit about our African culture. Now that I'm on the subject of making fufu today, we're going to talk a little bit about our African culture. So I'm going to be grating four cloves of garlic in this as well. So I'm spreading this evenly in the pot. Guys, I'm so afraid of this grater. Oh my God. I got like scratches and cuts from it over the easter season grating all that garlic and stuff oh all right so i want to get everything out all right so i'm just going to stir the pieces of garlic that i just grated in the pot and as you can see guys the coconut milk is nice rich and thick it looks almost like a porridge already It's so thick, guys, that I'm going to be adding some water to it. So I'm using some alkaline water in my pot. Good morning, Audrey. You're late for class. So I'm adding a little bit of water, guys, because it is, a matter of fact, I have a little residue left in the cup. Let me get all the residue out of the cup so we don't waste anything. All right, so I'm just stirring this in. It's nice and rich and thick we turn a little bit more heat up and i'm not putting my sawfish yet all right guys so let's talk a little bit good morning miss joycey good morning um georgette um so let's talk a little bit about our african culture so i did a little homework before i came on the show and i learned so much about our culture in jamaica and where we got a lot of our recipes from, especially our stews, especially our ground provision, they were brought to Jamaica from Africa. Now they brought Aki to our, um, our country. They also brought cassava, sweet potato, pigeon peas. Yes, I read all of that this morning. I'm like, wow. Mm. And what I also learned that while they were on the plantation, they were more vegans than meat eaters because they gave them next to nothing to eat. They had nothing to eat most times. So most of their diet was considered plant-based. So they used to eat stuff that they plant in the ground, like the callaloo, um, like the spinach, like the okras. They used to combine. And now I can understand why when they make their soups they add so much okra to it or they add so many greens and leafy stuff because that's you know where they get it from their uh, their ancestors their foreparents so i also learned that if they would eat any kind of meat it wouldn't be the lean parts of the cow right they would eat the pig the pig foot the pig tail, which we love to put in our stew peas. Um, the pig snout, which is the mouth part and the ears and the ears of the pig. Um, they that's the part they would throw to them like they're dogs. And I don't want to seem racist or anything. I'm not being racist, but I'm just telling you like it is because I'm proud of my culture and where I'm from. And I have Nigerian blood inside of me because I learned, I did a little bit of history about my family. And I learned that my grandfather, grandfather, father came from Africa, from Nigeria on a slave ship. And he was sold to a plantation owner in St. Elizabeth. Yes, named Mr. Webb. And that's where our family name Webb came from. So guys, I'm predominantly Nigerian by blood. Yes. All right. Don't want my thing to burn. It's bubbling. It's getting to that custard stage, guys. Look at it. 
It almost looks like whipped cream. And that's what I'm looking for this morning in this what we call rundown. Alrighty. So one of the dishes that they normally make in Africa, they brought it to Jamaica, but Jamaicans didn't embrace it that much. What they did, they just boiled it whole like the sweet potato, just boil it whole and eat it with, you know, whatever stews or meat they were making. Um, but in Africa, the original way to prepare these yams and the plantains, like the green plantains, was to um, pound it. They used to use a thing called a martyr. I think I have a mini one around here. Yes, I have a mini one around here. The bigger version of this, they usually pound the yams in this until it forms a paste to make what they call a fufu and then they would wrap that fufu in a piece of cloth but in modern time now they have been using um the reynolds plastic wrap or whatever syrian wrap they can find and they would put it together and that would be their carb with whatever meat or stews that they are making so this morning I decided that I'm going to be making the sawfish rundown with the coconut milk because they cooked a lot of their stews with coconut milk. They cook a lot of their meats with coconut milk. And then if you notice, Africans use a lot of tomatoes or tomato paste to make their sauces, stews, or gravies. So, you know, that's where we get our stew chicken from and our stew fish and our stew this and stew that. Yeah, it all came from the Africans. Um, what is June saying? Through the slave trade, not my cup of tea, no okra. Oh, not everybody. I never I never liked okra. I started eating okra when I came to live in New York. One day I went and they gave me a stuffed steam fish and it was filled with okra. I was like, oh. But when I tasted it, it was very yummy. So I ended up eating it. So I started eating okra since then. All right, guys. So now that my pot has formed this custard, I'm gonna be adding my saltfish. I'm gonna be adding my saltfish. Oops. I have a few pieces of time up here. Let me script in the pot too. All right, guys, so I'm stirring in my saltfish and it's so thick that I think I want to add a little water. It's very thick. It almost looks like porridge. All right. So I think the water is balancing it out the, you know, the consistency of it. So now I'm going to season my pot. So now that the herbs have boiled out in the coconut milk, guys, and let me turn my fire down. I'm gonna be seasoning this pot. So I, although I have a scotch bonnet pepper in, it's not busted because I just wanted to get the flavor from the outside of the pepper. Um, I'm adding some crushed red pepper. And then I'm gonna add a little black pepper. Just a little sprinkle, not a lot. And then I'm gonna add a little Maggie. Just a little sprinkle, because remember the sawfish is already salt, so you don't want to put too much seasoning, so it just tastes weird. You ever eat sawfish and some people put seasoning salt in it? Yeah, I hate that taste. I don't put I don't use seasoning salt anyway. So I'm sprinkling a little bit of Maggie and a slight sprinkle of adobo, slight, not a lot, just to taste. All right, so I'm just gonna mix this all together. So as you can see, guys, this looks like a nice roux in the pot with saltfish pieces and herbs and spices in it. Yes. And then to this, guys, I'm going to top it off with a little parsley. Because, you know, parsley adds that deliciousness to the food, flavor. We also use it as a garnish. Yes. All right, guys. So I'm leaving this to continue simmering. Don't want it to burn. 
Okay, let me get some paper towel right here. Let me do some cleanups right here. All right, so now, guys, I'm going to be making the fufu, the African-style fufu. So what did June say? Oh, Michelle, your ancestors are not Nigerians. Lord Jesus. Says who? Let's sit down here, Michelle. <laughs> All right, let me plug this, this blender in. All right, guys, so let me bring, 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 I said bling, bring this blender forward. So, guys, I'm using three green plantains to make this fufu. So, I've removed the excess uh, middle part of the plantains, that little black seeds in the middle. I have removed it because when the fufu is cooked, you don't want to see too much black, 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 black in the, in the mix. So I moved most of it, most of it, not all. Michelle Farkerson, you don't that unless you check. There was one original man and one woman. <laughs> okay. Fix her for my Audrey. All righty, guys. So I'm going to be adding very little water because I don't want this to be too um runny uh, you know what let me change places Oops. let me change places I, I didn't realize this was on low too all right all right so i have my green pot here waiting it's already hot i had the fire on low i didn't remember and i touched the pot and it's hot all right guys so i have three peeled plantains here i cut them in little squares and then i'm going to be adding a little water so i'm going to be adding like a half a cup of water not a lot so i'll be gradually adding the planting pieces and just let me take this part out of the blender so i'm just going to gradually add it in so let me add a few pieces so I'm going to do it in small portions any more water I'm just gonna add the rest of the plants in all right something is stuck on one of the blades because I'm pressing it and it's not pressing but not to worry and smooth I'm taking my time it's gonna take some time but I'm taking my time in this blender today so I have to be digging like lumps from the bottom because I want it very very smooth 
So guys, as you could see, the texture is smooth like a baby bottom, but I still think I need to get it a little bit smoother. I'm going to tip one little bit of water in. I don't want to put too much. I got it to the desired texture. Good morning, Auntie Rose. Good morning, Bertram Henry. How are you? All right, guys. So let me turn off my rundown over here before it dry out. And guys, so I'm going to slowly mix this in my green pot. So if you notice, no water is in the pot, no butter, no nothing. That's how they usually make it. So I'm getting every ounce of this blended plantain in the pot so I can have a perfect fufu. And one thing, guys, they never usually put anything in it in terms of seasoning. It always had a bland taste because, remember, they're eating it with the stews that they're making. So I'm, I'm don't want to waste anything. I'm trying to get every ounce out of the blender. All right, I think that's it. All right, guys. So I'm going to be using a small wooden paddle because when they're making fufu in Africa, they use a big paddle, but I have a mini one here. So I'm going to be using my paddle to scrape the pot and turn this bad boy around. So it's similar to how we make turn cornmeal, guys. You know how you turn the cornmeal in the pot? It's a, quite, it's a similar concept that you use to make the plant in fufu. So I'm going to be stirring this until it's cooked until it has a pasty looking texture. And I can feel this start to thicken. Let me get a glove so I don't burn myself because the pot handle is hot. So I have to keep turning this, guys. And the only seasoning I'm going to add to it, because you know I like everything with taste. I'm just going to add a little adobo. That's it. But this is optional. So it's quite similar, guys. And as you can see, guys, this is the texture. This is the texture. It's quite similar to turn cornmeal. We call it turn cornmeal, but that's our, our form of fufu boy guys this is a workout this morning i didn't go to the gym yet but this is a workout for my arm i don't know how these guys did it and they were using wood fire back then they were using wood fire back then. Oh, I can smell the planting, guys. It smells amazing. All right, so I'm going to change to a wooden spoon, guys, because now that the paddle um, has done its time or its job, now it's time for the spoon. So they would interchange from a paddle to a wooden spoon. They would change from a paddle to a wooden spoon. 
So guys, if you could see the texture in the pot and I'm turning it on camera so you guys can see what the texture looks like. If you have seen African fufu, this is the texture it has, like a stretch-like, glue-like um, texture. So I'm stirring this until it's cooked because remember, the green plantain is raw. So as you could see, guys, the color, because remember, the color of the plantain is slightly like a peachy color in its raw state. But as you could see, the peachy color is going away slowly and it starts to have a different color and texture and texture. So this is how their fufu normally looks. So please, guys, no guy, no nobody gonna come out on a fufu now. <laughs> it's a task. It's a workout. All right. So this is a nice plant in fufu, guys. And look at the texture. It's cooked already. Can you believe it? It's cooked already. So I'm gonna leave it a little more. I'm gonna tip one little bit of water in it. Normally, they would add a little bit of water if necessary. I think I wanna add a little drop. So I'm adding some alkaline water to that. And then I'm gonna stir and leave it for a minute or two. Talk to you a little bit. Give away my prizes. And Elwood, get a rest of the people in my chance to win a prize this week, eh? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. So I think I have the right texture. Woo! Fufu look good. All right. So I'm just going to sprinkle a little adobo because there's nothing in it. it it's supposed to have a bland taste, but I'm adding a little bit of adobo because I like things with little taste in it. All right. So my fufu is almost ready, guys. My fufu is almost ready. And I have to use a spatula to get this out of the pot because, you know, you don't want to waste anything. You just use this knife to take off the excess of the wooden spoon because you don't want to waste it. You don't want to waste anything. Ooh. All right. Okay, guys, so I'm just going to leave it on a low fire to finish, you know, simmering down. She said, okay, mom, I'll try. Muscle building work. Work, work, work today for this meal. Yes, I have to work. Sometimes we have to work if we want a good taste in food. You ever watch those chefs on Instagram and YouTube and see how hard they work? There is this guy that I admire on Instagram, and I could I could say it out loud. The name of his page is Coconut. I don't know if I follow him now. I don't remember. <laughs> Coconut NYC. That guy is so creative. He's Jamaican, and he puts mad twists to his stuff. His presentations are off the chain. Yes. Kima said, you need to put more than adobo because fufu is nasty. Miss sorry. It have no taste whatsoever. Okay, because of how they make it, and I'm trying to stick to the African tradition, Kima, I put a little adobo for my taste, but normally they don't put nothing in there. I used to cook African foods, so I can tell you. Whatever the stew is, that's the taste they add to the fufu because they dip the fufu in the stew and that's what balances out the taste of it but i like spice and i like things with taste so i added a little adobo but i can assure you that my um my rundown over here is very flavorful so when i dip that fufu in it yeah man it's gonna have the right taste all right guys just let me run and grab the gifts I 
have gifts that I have not distributed yet. Wow. Georgia, I called you this week to give you your gift, but you didn't answer. All right, guys. So today, oh, it's three gifts I'm giving away. I'm keeping this one. I'm giving away, because the summer is coming, um, I'm giving away today a nice picnic bag. A nice picnic bag. And of course, guys, it's green. And I'm also giving away, oh, no, not giving away that. And I'm also giving away a mini utensil set. So you know what? Let me give away two bags. I was going to keep this one for myself. Let me give away two bags. All right, I changed my mind. I could always get more. All right, so I'm giving away two picnic bags today, guys. And a mini utensil set, which is mini, a mini spatula set. It, it has a brush and it has three or four different shapes of spatula that you could use to, you know, if you're making a smoothie and you want to get the excess out of the blender, this is perfect for it. It's mini, it's cute, it's green, of course, and it's unusual. Good morning, Donald. Good morning, Richie. Thanks for joining my live this morning. Good morning, Carol. I see my live on YouTube is festive today. Good morning, good morning, and thanks for sharing that information yesterday, Donald. I really appreciated that. I passed it on to a few of my friends, and that was very creative. And trust me, I'm going to get on that MasterChef program. I'm getting there. Trust me. Just, just allow me to get to 10K, guys. Just help me work to get to 10K, and I'm sure I'm going to be on that MasterChef program. Yeah. Anyway, guys, let's get cracking. Okay, so the first question, the first question, so some time ago, I made some rundown, but I didn't call it rundown. If you can tell me, and I made it on live too. If you can tell me what I call that rundown break feast that morning, you win this basket. You win this picnic basket for the summer. It's nice. It's huge. You can hold your igloo. You can hold your plate and your fart them. Can all the blanket too for the picnic? Yes. If you can tell me what was the title of that dish on that live that day, I called it, I didn't call it rundown, I call it something else. If you could tell me what I call it, you win this basket. Uh, question number two. Question number two. Some time ago, Mother's Day is around the corner. And um, last Mother's Day, last Mother's Day, um, Twine cooked for me on Mother's Day. Instead of taking me to a restaurant, he decided that he was going to make me dinner. What did he make for me on that Mother's Day? And if I'm going to get this, something wrong. So that's for the second prize. That's for the second prize. And the third prize, I'll think about the question towards the end of the program. So the first prize, if you can tell me what was the title of that similar dish that I made this morning, because I used salt mackerel when I made that dish. And I didn't call it rundown. I called it something else. I called it something else. Tell me what I call that dish and you win this basket. I have to start giving you clues because I see you guys are not attentive to my channel. Okay, so if it's not down, what is it? If something is not down, I'm going to know if I'm going to go to school and I'm going to listen to the teacher them. If it's not down, it's what? So you have to tell me the title of that dish that day. I called it something else. What was the title of that dish? Nobody? It was a rundown dish, but I didn't call it rundown. I called it... No, I didn't call it cook up, Ava. If I didn't call it rundown, what, what, what... And if it's not up, it's what? Cook up? No. It's a rundown. It's a that was the title of the dish, but I, I it, it 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 I totally because I wanted it to be a twist. 
I didn't call it run down. I call it something else. And I cooked it on live. All right. So that's for this prize. And for this prize, tell me what twine cooked on Mother's Day last year for me. Mother's Day is around the corner. Mother's Day is around the corner, guys. What did twine cook for me last Mother's Day? What's my favorite type of food? I'm giving you clues. I'm giving you clues. All right. So I'm waiting for answers. As soon as I get answers, then we'll know who win the prize. All right. So let's turn off my fufu. Uh, let me get a spatula from my green drawer. All right. So guys, this is how they do it in Africa. They, the mothers, they use a certain type of cloth, like a cheesecloth, or I don't know if they call it a different name. No, it wasn't salmon, Ava. It wasn't salmon at all. It was salt mackerel. And normally we call salt mackerel cooked with coconut milk um, run down. But I didn't call it run down. I called it something else. It was salt mackerel that I cooked. All right. So this is how they do it in Africa. But the modern way that I see they have been um, presenting the fufu. They place it on a um, plastic wrap. They place it on a plastic wrap. So I'm going to make two because I'm going to make one for twine. So I'm scooping my first amount here. All right. So this is what they do. They make it into a nice little ball. They make it into a nice little ball like this. That's how they do it. That's how they make their fufu. And they let it sit for a little bit. I'm going to make another one. So guys, I'm taking you to Africa today. So this is how they make their fufu nowadays. They scoop it out. And they put it on a cellophane wrap. So Kima, trust me, my fufu are going to taste good today because I'm going to put little adoba in there. It doesn't have a blah taste. I Trust me, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be flavorful. All right, so let's seal up this bad boy. Guys, it smell like porridge. <laughs> it smell like green planted porridge. Salt mackerel turn up. Monica, you're almost there. Turn up. Ah, salt mackerel turn up. She almost get the answer. She almost got the answer. Salt mackerel, I'm looking for one word. If you give me that one word, you win the basket. One word. I called it salt mackerel. You're missing one word. Instead of turn up, it's... If you don't walk, you what? If you don't walk, you what? All right. All right. So now for my presentation. Run up. Donald Ramsey got it right. Donald Ramsey said the word I was looking for. Why, guys? Oh, no, so slow. <laughs> Donald, you won this basket. You won this basket. I was looking for that even one word all morning since the question. You got it right, Donald. It was actually salt mackerel run-up. That's what I call the dish. Salt mackerel run-up. I gave you so many clues. I said, if it's not down, it's up. Um, I even slipped one at a time and said up and nobody picked it up. So it was salt mackerel run-up. I'm going to give the prize to Donald um, Monica because you still didn't give me the correct name. It was run-up, not run-down. So he gave the correct answer. All righty. So I'm going to get my platter now. 
we kept some water in this pot because lord it's a hard to wash out and then guys i'm gonna be scooping my gooey gooey in this pot and guys this gooey gooey you know what me put some fire on it because you know when you leave coconut for a while it tends to sleep i'm gonna tip a little water because i want it i want it hot on the plate it got cold so i'm just gonna put a little fire and then i'll scoop it on the plate because that's how coconut is in a guys if you leave coconut for five minutes under no heat it gets all sleeped up so i'm just adding a little tip more water just to get it to the texture that i want it to serve on the plate i shouldn't turn the fire off of it i should just leave the fire And guys, this is smelling so yummy. So yummy. All right, so now that I put a little heat on it. All right, so, so, let me scoop this bad boy in this plate. Of course, I'm gonna put the pepper as a garnish. Oops. I don't want to put this big piece of scallion. Take out the time to, don't want the time sticking up. All right, let me put a little bit more. All right, guys, so I have my salt fish run down here. I was going to add pineapples, but I think the pineapple is going to change the, the flavor of it. So I changed my mind. And I'm just cleaning the edges of the plate because, you know, presentation is a big thing for me. All right. So, guys, I'm going to open my fufu now. Let's see if it comes out like how the Africans do it. Let me, I think this one is too hot. I think I have to put a little cold water on it. Because if it's too hot, guys, it's sticking on the um, the plastic. So I'm just running some cold water on it just to let it leave the, the, um, the plastic bag. Okay. Let's dry it off. So, guys, African food this morning. She said mackerel run up. You said it too late, Monica. Donald Ramsey said the run up. All right. Let me pop this so I get it out faster. Right. So, I get it to the right texture, guys. So I got it to the right texture. Okay. So guys, here we have it. Planting fufu. Here we have it. Planting fufu, African style. And saltfish rundown. Yes. So let's taste this. Let's see how this tastes. Kima, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. So in Africa, guys, let me do it the African way. When you're going to eat at the table, you have to wash your hands in a bowl. I don't know if you ever watch those African movies and you see they have a bowl and they wash their hands in the bowl. They clean their hands and then they dry it because everybody normally share from the stew and the fufu because sometimes they have a big fufu on the table and everybody's pulling from it. So they eat with their hands. And this morning I'm going to eat with my hand. So I just wash my hand. 
and they don't eat with the hand that they use in the bathroom. For some reason, they don't use that hand to, to pull the fufu. So I have to use my left hand. If you're a lefty, I guess you would use your right hand. So I'm, I'm right-handed. So I'm going to be using my left hand to pull the fufu the same way that Africans do it. So they pull it like this. They pull it like this. <laughs> and then they dip it in the stew like this. And they take up some of the stew. And they hold it like this. And then they do this. And they lick their fingers. I hate that, but I'm going to do it on live just, you know, to show you the way they do it. Mmm, this tastes good, Kima. The little adobo added that little flavor to the fufu. Mmm. And if you watch them on the African shows, they lick their fingers. Because that's the way they did it back in slavery. They had no fork like the white folks. They had to use their fingers. So I'm just demonstrating the way they did it. And guys, I'm telling you, this dish this morning is very delicious. I'm glad I made it. And I'm going to be enjoying this dish. Alrighty, so congratulations to Dono for winning this picnic basket. Now, I still have a gift to give away, a spatula set. If you can tell me, Second question, Mother's Day was the seafood ball. Yes, Donald, you got that too. You got, you got, you won the two prizes today. Wow, congratulations. So you won the picnic basket and you also won the mini utensil set. So when you're making your smoothies in the morning, Donald, you have a nice little mini spatula to clean that blender out to get all the excess smoothie that you made congratulations congratulations so i have one more basket to give away one more basket to give away and may the best person wins okay huh. two weeks ago if you all don't get this question i know you're not watching my channel two weeks ago i made something on live i'm not gonna tell you what it is you have to tell me what I made two weeks ago on live. Two Saturdays ago on live, tell me what I made on the live. So it's not last week, it's the week before. The week before last week. Tell me what I made on live. Who first can give me that answer wins this picnic basket. Ah, the picnic basket. Tell me what I made two Saturdays ago on live. If you can give me that answer, you win this picnic basket today. And this basket is very nice. I was going to take one for myself, but I decided to give away both of them. I can always go get another one. Yep, summer is coming. You want to go out with the family? If you tell me what I made two Saturdays ago, you win this prize you win this picnic basket. So Instagram, the question is also thrown out to you if you're watching my live every week. Um, Facebook, YouTube. So if you told me, if you can tell me, I said told me. <laughs> if you can tell me what I made two Saturdays ago in live, you win this picnic basket. And you guys should be paying attention. You guys should be paying attention. No eating utensils, international appeal. What is she saying? You left-handed. Good morning, Leon. My cousin is on live. And one of the webs that I talk about today, guys, I told you my family name is Web. One of my cousins are on live right now. And I was giving them a little history, Leon, about the web name, how it came about. You know, I was telling them that it came from a plantation owner that um, bought our great, 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 great grandfather from the slave ship that came from Nigeria. That's how we got our family name. The plantation owner that bought that slave named Mr. Webb. And he named that slave Webb. And that's where I come from. Yeah, we have Nigerian blood. All right. 
If Sandra was on, she said it was asking me for specifics. All right, guys, let me give you a clue. It was the Easter season. That's all I'm giving you. If you guys don't get this, week before last Saturday, I cooked something very interesting on live. It was the Easter season. It was kind of a different type of cooking for that. Yes, June got it. June got it. Escovich, stuffed Escovich snapper. Okay, great. So June won the basket. June on Facebook. June, congratulations to you. Yes, it was indeed stuffed Escovich snapper that I made on live two weeks ago. Thanks for watching, June. I see you're paying attention. All right, guys. So if you liked what Seely made in Seely's Kitchen today, I want you to like this video, share this video, and if you're not yet subscribed to Seely's Kitchen YouTube channel, I don't want to wait for it now. Like my secret watcher here, Donald Ramsey. Him watch my channel and him now make no comment and come text me the other day with him bright self. Come tell me, say, he's a secret watcher. And just this week, and I'm calling your name on the live, Anne-Marie from Jersey. Yes. Sometimes she watch my lives after the fact because she doesn't get to come on live all the time. But she said she purposely come, I'll go on YouTube just to see what I made um, on live that morning. So, Anne-Marie, if you're, if you're not watching now, I know you're going to catch up later. Yes. Made a, make a comment on the African dish that I made and tell me what you think. All right, guys. So the food tastes good. I'm going to devour it right now. I'm going to leave some for Twine. I hope he likes it because he's a very picky eater. I might not have said it. He eats a lot, but he is very picky and he, he likes his stuff a certain way. So I hope he likes fufu because it's my first time making fufu since I married to him. So let's see if he likes it. And I will tell you in the comments or in my post if he likes it, yes or no. So as Jamaicans would say, what good. So to all of you on this live today, I want you to take care of yourself. Enjoy the heat outside. It's nice and hot today outside. It's not cold. I hope we don't have a bipolar weather this week because it's been hot and cold all week. But it's a nice day today, so enjoy your Saturday. Prepare for church tomorrow to praise the Lord. And walk good. Take care of yourself. And thanks for joining the live, all of you. Bye-bye.